HBCU Digest Radio, welcome back to our presidential series, conversations with our distinguished leaders from historically black colleges and universities across the landscape. Today, our special guest is the new president of Claflin University, the ninth president, uh, Dr. Dewan Warmack, uh, who arrives in uh, Orangeburg today. Uh, it's a great fanfare and great commentary from folks online. So, Doc, first and foremost, um, what what's your reaction to today? This is the second time you've been through something like this. Um, it is. What what was it? What what was the feeling with you? You know, your wife and daughter there, the the Claflin community there. How was how was the reception for you? I mean, it was amazing, man. It was uh, uh, Claflin came out in forces, man. It was a packed house, people standing against the wall, um, uh, draped in the uh, proper Claflin colors. <laughs> um, and, <laughs> <laughs> no man it was it was it was extremely warm welcome man from from a alum that was a class of 61 to you know students that are current students now man and so it was a, 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 a amazing warm welcoming um we felt at home we felt appreciated and so we're excited about this new journey and this new uh opportunity in our life so it was it was very refreshing to see that the uh the message from Harris Stowe State, uh, which will soon be your your former institution, was so positive and so laudatory about all the things you were able to accomplish there with enrollment um, and legislative lobbying and, and increasing sponsor research and doing all these great things. Um, and they really made it clear that, it, you know, it's going to be hard to replace you. So what is it about Claflin that attracted you to this opportunity? What are some of the similarities and differences you see, of course, positively in both respects? But what are the things that you see that, for this new chapter in your life? Right. Um, I, I mean, Harrisstow has been um, home for me, right, for the past five years. You know, they took a shot on one of the youngest college presidents in the country, believed in me and believed in my leadership. The board was uh, just, just an amazing board that supported me through thick and thin. And we were able to accomplish a lot together. We were able to assemble a, a, a team that believed in the bold vision, um, had outstanding students who uh, came in uh, willing to learn and uh, leaving there to go do remarkable things as global leaders so it was it was, it was a, a great run at uh, in Harris and it wouldn't have happened without the support of faculty staff students and the board and in the Saint, greater St. Louis community and I think you know what that in, in timing is everything right because I was in a great space you know I wasn't actively searching you know but when this opportunity for Claflin you know number seventh HBCU in the country you know have just recently com uh, uh, completed a hundred million dollar capital campaign um, in 2014, was ranked the best liberal arts institution in the state of South Carolina. You know, not just HBCUs, and so they are. They have a, a very strong foundation that's here. And so, when I think about some of the skill sets and abilities that I bring to the table, and uh, looking at the uh, job announcement, and talking to the search firm, and talking to the board, some of the areas that they want to improve on going forward, you know, really leans to my my level of expertise. So I'm I'm excited to come here, build on the legacy as we continue to transcend into the future so you're following a, a very distinguished president in uh henry tisdale uh an academician um great scholar and a gentleman um much in, in the vein that that you have, have uh led your former institution have you had a chance to speak with him has he shared with you anything about the claflin community about the the vision that has been in place for 19 or so years and how you can build upon it in areas in which you can um, offer a divergent but a, a complementary new uh, strategic outlook for the school. Oh, yes, indeed. So we've had um, a couple conversations. My day today actually started off meeting with him before the press conference just to, I, I fundamentally believe, you know, I, I, I'm standing on the shoulders of a giant. And I believe, I've always believed this in regards to history, you can't know where you're going if you don't know where you come from. And so he brings a rich historical context of this institution and what it, what it stands for. And not just from 25 years of a presidency, but he was also here as a student. So he understands this is, this his home for him and so he was gracious enough to share his wisdom and, and, and knowledge and nuggets with me and, and as you know one thing he left me with he said you know that it's yours now right you know I'm here to support you I'm here to as, as, as much as you may need me but know that it's important that you create and develop your own legacy you know and so um so I am I'm, I'm we've had uh, 
intense conversations about, you know, the great things that are happening. And um, they have a, a pretty robust strategic plan as outlined their trajectory, um, for, you know, for the next couple years at least. And so, you know, have that as a theoretical framework to work from. And I think it's um, the board has been clear and, you know, and within the search process, the things that they're looking for to doing to go to the next level. And I think that's what attracted them to me. You know, Claflin wants to grow, um, you know, and I have a strong background in that. Claflin wants to increase some of the academic programs, you know, and uh, a couple other things. So I'm excited to be able to come here and, um, you know, bring some of the skill sets that I've been able to do at other institutions and, and continue to build on a great legacy here at Claflin. You know, their, their, their mantra is very simple. You know, they want to... Um, prepare visionary leaders um, and install that this notion of, you know, the Claflin confidence in those students. And so that, that resonates with me, and I'm, I'm excited to continue to build on that. You make an interesting point about some of the things that already exist. So you're now moving from an institution where you had to put things in place to an institution right. where you have to build upon things already in place. Is that, a, mm -hmm. is, do you think that that's a, for anybody, not just for you, but for any leader who is wanting to follow in your footsteps, how do you how would you instruct them or advise them to approach that kind of a transition where you have to go from an architect to uh, almost a contractor of sorts and adding on to something that's already pretty good? Right. And I think it takes um, a, a different skill set and ability to be able to do it. But I will say this first and foremost, um, I do this because this is a calling for me mm -hmm. and my ego is not tied to the work at all. Right. So I'm, there's not about nothing about me that no stretch in, in this work and anyone who's worked with me and served with me know that's just that's never me. And so um, I, I go to do the work. And so Harrisstow at that time needed to you know grow and build on some of the things that are there. Um, I think, you know, with Claflin, what they need uh, in some of the areas that, you know, I think there are some growth areas and in, in, in areas that's there. But I think it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not that egotistical to think that I have to solve all the problems. If I can come into a place that has a, a solid foundation and I can build on that, I'm okay with that as well. You know, um, I, I was 37, well, 36 when I accepted a job at Harris Stone, 37 when I started. Uh, I ain't no spring chicken no more, right? So I, I am, uh, you know, I think, I think, I think. <laughs> You're still pretty young, yeah. brother. Don't don't. It's yeah, a lot of people yeah, listen yeah. to be like, wait a minute now. You. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well, what 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 the difference is? You know, when you when you serve in these seats, you uh, you think about the average tenure of HBCU That's presidents, right. man. That's you right. know, and so the work is. This is my 21st year now in higher ed, man. Yeah. So I've been 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 and been doing it for a minute, and so um so so not that I'm I I I'm excited about the opportunity. So so just because it's a um, sort of a a solid foundation, that doesn't mean there's not a lot of work to be done. You know. So there's a lot of work to be done here as well. So I'm, I'm looking forward to um, working with the team here and, you know, um, and how do we continue to push for it to continue to do great things here. You were um, one of our leading presidents in the sector in the way that you kind of spoke out about the impact of legislative appropriations and the political process on your HBCU. Um, mm -hmm. And while a lot of folks kind of shy away from that you embrace the opportunity to say hey you look we, we need more resources we need more money and this is why um and now you're in a, in a totally different realm where there's not a lot of public or legislative engagement in that respect um where you're making an appeal to you know lawmakers in your, at your state level and at your you know your county or your city level what do you think that 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 transition is going to be like where you're now largely tuition and and, and philanthropy driven um, you know, to survive and thrive. Right. So in my, in my 20 years, I've been 10 years public, 10 years private. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I've had a, a keen understanding of both the public aspect and, and the private institutions. And so, um, I, I think, you know, for me, the, the opportunity now, um, to in, in some ways control my own destiny you know you know this notion of you know you uh what's the old saying you know you eat what you you, you uh, eat what you yeah exactly and so um and so so for us understanding enrollment being enrollment driven the the fortunate piece for me is every hbcu i've served I've transformed the enrollment management process. So that's my gift, right? So when I think about that piece of it and, 
record enrollment multiple years at Bethune Cookman when I was there over the enrollment management process. We've had record enrollment every year at Hair Stowe, so that's an area that I know. So if I if I can control my destiny and it's based on enrollment, I feel pretty confident. And so, um, you know, I think and then the other piece about that is that you don't have in some ways with the private, you don't have as much red tape, right? Mm-hmm. You know, we can we can do things strategically that's in the best interest of our students, degree program creation, you know, uh, degree offering, not having to go through 10 levels of bureaucracy to be able to get degrees approved and things like that. So there's some pros and cons to both. The, the interesting piece about leaving public is you knew you were guaranteed that money, right? Yeah. So that that was going to be in there um, every time. Here is you got you got to go and get it, you know. And so um, so I'm excited about the uh, the opportunities and the challenges that come come with that. And you know I took that in a uh, strong perspective of you know as we're thinking about the transition and what made sense for me next in my career and what type of institution I will go and serve. And it made sense, you know. Um, I am a small institution guy i'm not you know that that's who i am that's what i believe in i believe in that small that that intimate family feel the touch feel the students students know um uh, on on they know who their president is and be able to walk around and know my students on a first name basis so Claflin still gives me that opportunity as well what do you want the alumni to know about their role in your transition, it was it was hilarious looking at some of the comments on the uh, Facebook broadcast of the introductory press conference. And some people are asking, you know, is he saved? Does he know the Lord? Um, <laughs> and you got to You got to love HBC alumni for clowning right. in a moment like that. But it, what, it, what is it that Claflin has a solid alumni base? They really show up in a lot of different ways. What is it that you want them to know about their role as advocates and stakeholders in your success? Right. I I think to your point in the last question in regards to when you lose state appropriations, you have to increase alumni given. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and so that if you look at any of these um, non HBCUs, their amount of alumni that support that institution. And so, you know, and, and for me, it's just not about you know, given in it from a dollar perspective, you know, I, I need the alums to help as we continue to, if we want to continue to be uh, g- great, you know, it, it can't happen without alumni support. And I look forward to going to visit every one of the alumni chapters, you know, personally um, to, you know, put that plea and call out for them to support us. You know, I think it's, you know, people say what makes Harvard, Harvard, what makes Princeton, Princeton, what makes all of these Ivy Leagues, it's their alumni. Mm-hmm. It's that simple. You know, um, you know, they, they believe in that brand and, and what they end up doing, not just from a giving perspective, but they also help in facilitating relationships to help um, you know, offset that and also create opportunities for the current students. You know, most time in these corporations, those alums or those different type of institutions, the first place they go and recruit is their alma mater. And so how do we, you know, get our students in quality internships that lead to lifelong ships that helps with them? You know, when we think about a you know, private institution, you know, I think part of that challenge is, you know, um, the debt students leave with. You know, we, Claflin continues to serve a, a, um, a large percentage of, you know, first generation college students from lower socioeconomic backgrounds, about 75 to 77% are, you know, Pell eligible. So, you know, how do we ensure that they graduate with less debt? So alums can help us, you know, with that process as well. And then not, not just the less debt, the gainful employment. How does the alumni help us get our students gainfully employed to ensure that they can come back and be contributing alums as well? So I'm, I'm excited about working with alums. Anytime you have over 50% alumni given, people believe in this institution. So Claflin has a great foundation of outstanding alums who love love this institution. I'm looking forward to working side by side with them as we continue to move Claflin forward. 